All right. Well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where in the world you happen to be. Uh, my name is Christopher Harrison, Senior Program Manager inside of Microsoft Cloud and AI. And this is Web Wednesday, where we uh, bring in somebody uh, much smarter than me to chat about something that is web dev related. And today, I'm honestly thrilled. This is a, 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 a reunion a long time in, in, in the making. We should start singing Reunited. Um, uh, uh, with uh, John Galloway uh, joining me today. Um, John and I uh, did a lot of work on MVA, a lot of videos and a lot of broadcasts back then. Um, and we saw just like uh, th this this wonderful following that kind of grew with what it is that that we did there. And we had an absolute blast in, uh, in building it. Um, and then eventually, obviously, you know, careers diverge and paths diverge and, and, uh, and so forth. And uh, sadly, of course, MVA is now no longer a thing. Fortunately, both John and I are both things inside of Microsoft. So that's that's always refreshing. Now, if you're not already familiar with uh, John Galloway, uh, John actually is a, a graduate of the Naval Academy, uh, spent a bit of time as a submariner. Uh, he also uh, won the, uh, the, 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 the main prize on The Price is Right. Uh, you'll have to ask him that, uh, that, that story a bit later. Uh, but he's been writing .NET now for, I, it seems like forever, and is uh, absolutely a person you want to go to if you have any .NET related questions. Uh, he's been working an awful lot with the .NET community, doing an awful lot of ASP.NET streaming. So if you're curious about ASP.NET, why it is that you should start writing ASP.NET and so forth, John is the perfect person to ask all of the those questions of. So without any further ado, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to bring on uh, John. Uh, so John, thanks. Thanks for, for doing this. Thank you so much for inviting me, Christopher. This is amazing. It's, <laughs> and it's, Web Wednesday, Web Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So we'd I don't I forget how long ago that was, but we'd there was a series of Web Wednesdays mm -hmm. and we would go kind of deep into a technology. And I remember, you know, Bootstrap and React and all that, but it, definitely a lot of ASP.NET. So, yeah. Yeah. A lot of ASP.NET, MVC. We did um uh entity framework. Yeah. Uh yeah. Those th lawyer. those were the days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was it was a lot of fun. It was quite a while ago now. Yeah. Um yeah, we're sort of just <laughs> aging ourselves. So, Good yeah. Um, so I, I do. I, I always like to start with this question uh, whenever uh, uh, whenever I do this, uh, mm -hmm. and especially I think with you because I know you've got such a, 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 a an, an, an interesting background. He said in English. Um, is I always <laughs> like to start with the question of like, how did you get to be John Galloway? Like, how did you get to? <laughs> well, I was born and my parents named me, and that's. <laughs> <laughs> and there you, you have it. If, uh, you, <laughs> if you want to hear my, so you're asking kind of how did I get from then to now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, <laughs> how did you find your way into technology? How did you find your way into into Microsoft? How did you find your way to you know sitting where you are and now chatting with me? Well, let me see. It's you know it's funny. So I've always thought computers were cool. Um, back back in my day, I had to ride my ten speed bike to school and stay after school to use a computer because we didn't have a computer at home. And then eventually we got one. And and um, I always played on computers, but I never really thought computers were more than just a really awesome, fun thing to play with. Um, I didn't really think of it as a career. I don't know why it didn't click in my brain. I guess I thought it was just too much fun. Um, so I, um, I mean, I remember helping my computer science major like roommates with their homework. I mean, I, I you know, I always was doing computer things. Um, but then, so I, I ended up going to the Naval Academy and studying physics, which was neat, but kind of mind bending. Beginning physics is simple, but towards the end, it's like relativistic, quantum, whatever, and it gets pretty mathy. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so then I, I was on, I, I, I got my free school by going to the Naval Academy and I paid for it by being a submariner for five years. So um, went to, I, I felt like studying you know, too much math as a physics major meant that I really should double down and study a lot more math studying nuclear physics. So that was great. <laughs> so anyhow, that was, that was fun. I got to travel around and stuff, but I got out after my five years and then I was kind of like, what do I do now? And I thought, you know, maybe I'll just see because computer is still really the thing I liked the most doing in my spare time and whatever was just learning computer stuff. And so I um, read some books and I got a, a, 
I managed to talk myself into a job at minimum wage as an intern, like writing visual basic applications. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I did that for a few years and then just, I, I tried to stay at jobs a while. I didn't job hop too much, but I worked at a few different companies and kind of moved into, um, into .NET and, and web development. And uh, so I, I just, uh, then over the years, you know, I've been just growing with .NET as .NET's grown. Um, and I've really enjoyed watching, you know, like .NET originally I was building desktop apps and web apps. and then watching it, it was always, you know, every couple of years there'd be a big new release and it's like, yeah, this is awesome. A big new thing. Um, and so I, you know, really a lot of my kind of development story has been paralleled along the, the development of .NET, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so I worked at, you know, some different kind of smaller companies. I worked, I, I mean, I worked at a tiny little startup, a three person startup. Um, I worked at a, um, you know, financial companies. I worked, you know, a lot of web dev for hire kind of stuff. Um, eventually, my last job before working at Microsoft, we were building um, things like conference websites for mm -hmm. for Microsoft and other conferences. And then we also did some some fun stuff like live streaming of uh, like March Madness games. We did all that, <laughs> you know, on on the web back when video on the web was amazingly hard. Now we're doing it and it's just like, okay, boom, 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 you know. <laughs> but, yeah, let me just fire up a browser. Yeah, yeah. So so then, yeah, I've been been at Microsoft for 10 years now. I've got a big crystal on my shelf back there that commemorates it. And um, I've been mostly doing community related work. Um, and a, a part of it is I just love, I love sharing the fun. I love helping point people at, that are getting started or people that are looking for information. I help them find what's there. And I also kind of like nerding out and figuring out how something works and then explaining it to someone, hopefully a little more simpler. So, you know what I mean? Trying to break yep. it down and saying like, here's this huge page of documentation, but really where you want to get started is right here, you know? So. I absolutely love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and that's that's really the same way that I try to approach whenever I'm teaching something is, you know, let's let's just focus in on this is the important stuff. All the stuff you can ignore or if you, you know, like really want to dig deep, you can go look at that. But this is this is the important thing. Yeah, yeah. And I feel yeah. like, you know, at Microsoft, there there's, you know, always jokes about Microsoft being like there's a joke about there's somebody lost in a blimp and he goes by uh, the skyscraper or who goes by the building and the person says, you know, gives him the latitude. And he's like, well, I'm lost. Where am I? And the guy gives him the latitude and longitude. And he says, okay, I'm, a, I'm right by the Microsoft <laughs> building because you gave me technically accurate information that's totally unhelpful, you know? Yep. <laughs> so it must be Microsoft. <laughs> I, I feel like we've done a lot to improve our docs over yeah. time, but, but there's still a, a, a way where we kind of flood you with information and we also um, tell you about the newest thing because we're excited. We just built it, mm -hmm. but that's not, you don't care about that maybe to start with. You want to know, I, I don't care what just happened yesterday. I want to understand like, what am I trying to learn? What can I do with it? Where do I get started? That kind of thing. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's actually, uh, so I'm, I, I, I've been doing a lot of video and, and uh, be doing some content on uh, learn as well. Um, yeah. That really is, is trying to drive towards that as well. Like, just tell me what I need to know. And, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah, it's absolutely. it's fun too. I've got I've got three daughters, and they've all taken computer classes over the years, and and it's fun approaching things from their point of view and seeing them. You know, my my oldest daughter's uh, is taking a C plus plus class now, and she's like, ah, and she's she was going through her homework last night, and she's like, this is getting harder and harder because we keep building on the same application. And my old code is really bad. And I'm like, that, my friend, is what's called technical debt. And yeah. she's like, this isn't helping at all, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. So yeah. So we're, we're, we're here today uh, to talk about uh, about ASP.NET. And as a little bit of background, um, you know, I did a lot of ASP.NET um, uh, back in the day that I was a, just a dyed-in-the-wool uh, .NET developer. I started with the, the original version of, of C Sharp. Um, I uh, did web forms. I moved over to MVC. I, 
I did SharePoint development, um, <laughs> which is like next level .NET, ASP.NET uh, work there. Um, and since joining Microsoft, there, it's it's really I uh, ironic that I, I almost just like stopped doing .NET. Like I obviously we, we, we did a lot with, with MBA, mm -hmm. but really after I left um, um, uh, the, that particular org, um, I haven't really written all, uh, any meaningful .NET since then. Then. Um, although you could argue, I probably wasn't writing meaningful .NET then <laughs> either. Um, but but it, like I haven't done that. And and again, you know, once I joined Microsoft, it was like okay, go learn Python and and go learn Node, which is certainly an interesting shift. It's you know like we hired Guido. This is mm. not our, our our parents Microsoft. And yeah. this is a very long winded way of of me getting to to this point of you know I was a long time .NET developer. I haven't written .NET, so I'm just going to ask you the question d directly. Is like. With with everything that's out there, why 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 should I why should I go back to doing uh, uh, ASP.NET specifically? Yeah, that's a good question, and I feel like it's you know it's a fair question. A lot of people don't we don't ask ourselves this as developers enough, and I think it's totally fine. I like being a a programmer. I like being somebody that does mm -hmm. fun stuff on computers, and I. I would, you know, if I'm going for a job interview or whatever, I'd say, yeah, I'm a .NET developer, but I consider myself just a, a programmer and a software developer. And so I love kind of hopping back and forth between things and not being so like, take one side and hate everyone <laughs> else, you know? Um, but I do feel like .NET is a really fun place to be. Um, it's It's got a lot of the best of a lot of things that I see going on in different programming uh, environments. So one is it, it is like, it's very transferable. So like you can build .NET applications, like I can be an ASP.NET de developer and build web web apps. And there's some, you know, some of the biggest web apps on the world are .NET apps. And especially some of the kind of, you know, the banks. And the, if, you, if you ever are able to book a, another airplane flight, it's, or, you know, <laughs> whatever, but it's gonna go through, through an ASP.NET app probably. And, you know, like Stack Overflow, of course. And, so, so it's definitely something that um, you can build web apps, but then you can also take those same .NET skills, same .NET code, that, you know, you can share a lot of that code and stuff and uh, favorite libraries, and you can use them to build games. You know, people are building AAA games with .NET and you can, with Unity and, and uh, you can build, um, and, you know, and also fun, like lightweight, easy to build games, you know, with, with Unity. And you can build mobile apps with Xamarin and you can build desktop apps that, you know, run on billions of computers with, with Windows. And you can, you know, you can build services. So I really like that part of .NET, that I'm not just learning one thing I can use one place, but it's like, use it everywhere, you know? Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. All right. I, I, I can get that. I can get that. So what... Uh... Trying to figure out um, uh, how I want to uh, answer this or ask the question is if I am a if I'm let's say a, a Node developer, I'm a, a, a Flask developer or or a Django developer. Like what what do I need to know about .NET? Like what um, what would be a, like a good starting point? Explain a, a, explain yeah. ASP.NET to me. That's that's Great. really the question that I want to get to. A, explain ASP.NET to me in okay. in two minutes or less. Well, oh, in two minutes or less. Well, that's <laughs> that's the hard part. Okay. So one thing I will say is, if you've done .NET a long, long time ago, forget what you know a little bit, because people. So like ASP.NET web forms from. 15 years ago or whatever, some people still have this stigma of it's slow and clunky and not web standard and all that. So uh, it's not that. Um, there, there's definitely like, it's it's learned a lot, it's a mature platform, but it's also like, it's not this stodgy heavy thing. Um, it's, it is, it's really fast because it's compiled. So it is kind of the sweet spot, like, you know, you talk about like, you know, Node and Django and, and you can build, they're cool, flexible languages, but you're not going to get the same level of speed. Um, and and um, so that that's definitely one thing. It's, it's really fast. It's also, it's kind of a, um, we've tried to learn from successful platforms. So we've learned, for instance, ASP Net, ASP.NET MVC learned a lot from Ruby on Rails. And then when we compared that with, um, 
with what was going on with Node, we said, you know, here there's some the Node people are doing some really smart things. You know, breaking things into packages is really cool. Um, having middleware in my startup, all that kind of stuff. There's, you know, the routing system is really cool. So we learned from that. And so we've tried to kind of give you the best of a lot of different things. Um, if if I can, let me share my screen yeah, here. absolutely. Because I want to show off one thing. So I'm going to, if you want to learn more, the site, if you just go to ASP.net, it'll redirect you here. So ASP.net, and it redirects you over to this site here. And then um, this kind of takes you through some of the stuff, you know, like you can build web apps. You can also, it's really good for building APIs, real-time uh, microservices, gRPC, all that. But this kind of takes you through some of that. One thing I want to brag about a little bit is Tech Empower Benchmarks. And so the Tech Empower Benchmarks, this is a, this is, um, not run by Microsoft. This is run. Um, this is community submits their their pull requests and everything, and it's it runs on all different kinds of systems. This is the one done in May, and you can see like ASP.NET is is going to be in the top, you know, ten, fifteen, pretty much always. Let me show you the the latest ones. So these are the kind of like nightly ones from a couple of days ago. And so, like, if we look at this, uh, let's go to plain text. ASP.NET Core is number seven. Okay. So, I mean, it's it's as fast as some of these other platforms that are built using C++. Okay. So, so that's pretty darn fast. Now, let's compare that to, and speed isn't everything, but it's important, right? So compare that to Node. And that's node is coming in at 139. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so you know, way back in the day, ASP.NET was slower than than Node, but now not at all the case. It's super, super optimized. Um, it's also another thing people don't know about .NET is that it's open source and cross-platform. Um, and it's not just kind of like pretend open source, it's like real <laughs> open source. We get tons of contributions from, you know. Linux devs, people build not, you know, I mean, it works on Linux, Mac, Windows, it works Docker. It's so, so it's definitely got, um, it's, I don't know. I think that's really cool. The whole open source side to it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think I kind of rambled a bit, but I think some of the things are you can build a lot of different web apps, you know, you can build, you know, cool, like browser standard things. You can of course build with, with, whatever kind of front end you want. You can build Angular or React or, you know, standard like HTML, you know, type apps. Um, you can also build, um, you know, the microservices and stuff. You can build super fast things and it's pretty quick to get started too. Okay. So I can, so, so I can set up APIs and use, you know, React or Vue or whatever it is as, as my front end, or if I want to do server-side rendering as well, um, I can go ahead and, uh, and do all of that. Yeah. And so the ways you can do that, there's MVC, which is going to feel pretty similar to like a Ruby on Rails, if you're familiar to that. Mm -hmm. So you have model view and controller. Um, and that's fine. But what we notice over time is a lot of people were just building their controllers just said return view. Like their controllers weren't doing a whole lot of stuff. And then people were also having to build data transfer objects. And so then they, they were, model view controller wasn't the best fit. So we built a simpler paradigm for that called razor pages. Mm. And with razor pages, you basically have a page, which is your markup and you use this razor syntax. So it's HTML with some C sharp sprinkled in there. And then you write a class that goes behind it and that's your model. Okay. And and it's kind of a smart model. So we it's um it's kind of similar to more like an MVVM. So you have a page model and your page model has it's basically model and controller kind of mashed together in a in a I think a pretty smart way. So, okay. And yeah. so for anybody who's not familiar with with all the 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 various TLA, so MVC yeah. model view controller is 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 a pattern. I can break out my gang of four book and, yep. and show that off. But model being the data view, being how we see it, and then the controller being responsible for figuring out well what did the user ask, and then getting the data and going from there. Um, MVVM then is that model view view model, which sort of takes that to the next step, uh, where it's like all right, well let's go ahead and create a custom model 
just for viewing our data, however it is that it might need to be put together. Because a lot of times our, our backend model data isn't necessarily how, uh, how we actually want to render that and display that out to the user. Exactly. Here, let me show you show this real quick. I've got yeah. this. Um, so this is you know creating file new MVC application. Let me blow this up a little. We're getting a little love for MVVM from Entity Adam here. There you go. There you go. So this is you know this is Razor. So you'll see this is standard HTML. It's got some Bootstrap in there, and then this is some C Sharp up at the top, and then here it's saying my model is index model. And so then we go over to this, and we here's our model class here. And so here we can create other stuff if we want to show something. So we could create like a, oops, create like a, you know. Nobody uh, saw that. <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever, um, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever. Um, I'm not typing well today, but basically I could say <laughs> here's here's a number of clicks or or current date or whatever. Sure. And then I could set it in my on get. So I would set that property and then in here I can bind to it. So okay. it's 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 kind of like it's a model and a controller kind of put together. If for people that know that. If not, it's it's really pretty quick to start and if you want to see how to start with that, if we go back to this like if I go to the ASP.NET thing and it says uh, get started, and there's there's a really quick like step you through this, and you can do this in about ten minutes. Like okay, really quick get started and build an app. So okay, yeah. I take it. I take it. It it looks a little bit to me that the the Razor page does um, a little bit like Vue. I've been playing a, a a bit with with Vue of late, where you've got the the template with with my HTML uh, up top, and then down below, here's all of the code. And so I'll have the the handlebar syntax, you know, those curly braces yep. to say, hey, this is this is the data that I want. And then down below, I've got the code that's going to be responsible then for um, you know setting all of the appropriate values and doing the updates and things like that. So it feels yeah. sort of similar. So if it feels like that, the one thing that's a little different here is that this is actually running on the server okay. and, as opposed to the client, right? So view that all that stuff is being kind of rendered out and it's going to use API. If it needs more information from the server, it's going to make an API call. This is actually going to render it all out and send it down just as HTML. Okay. So, okay. But that does, that does remind me of another thing, which is Blazor. And yes. Blazor, Blazor is is if in the .NET world is very hot right now. Um, <laughs> they've they've just you know been shipping some new stuff with Blazor WebAssembly, um, and and that's kind of more that client side, you know. So so yeah, yeah let's 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 yeah. stop and, and like define some terms here. So let's yeah. let's start with uh, let's start with Blazor. So what uh, I, I think. Actually, no, let's take, I, I, I think this is going to be the right order. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think WebAssembly would be the, the better thing to define first, right? Yeah. Okay. So what so is WebAssembly? WebAssembly is, is cool and crazy at the same time. So, so what we had was everyone was writing more and more JavaScript. And the browsers really started competing with how fast can we make the JavaScript run? And you know the fastest JavaScript was the 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 best browser, and so they started doing some really amazing things with compiling JavaScript down to bytecode on hmm. the you know down in the browser. So the browser would download all the JavaScript and it would compile it into into like not not quite binary but pretty darn fast. So it was it was really really fast code. So then over time they said you know what. What if we could make it so that you can write JavaScript that's got specific, like, you know, we say if you if you use only these certain things, we can compile it really fast. You know what I mean? Like if you if you write code that never does this and only uses these things, then we'll see that. And and so that was ASMJS. And then over time, they said, you know, um they they turned that into a more of a standard and they said, why don't we say you can write anything you want, compile it to this binary format we've already been using and send us that. And so it's actually compiled binary code and it's, but it, so it's crazy. It's, it's JavaScript. It does the same things JavaScript does, but it's binary code. What's kind of weird with that is you can write it in all different kinds of languages. 
So some of the first ones were like C++ and, and you know, different, there's a lot of different languages that'll compile down to WebAssembly. Okay, so hopefully, let, let me just recap that a little bit, make sure it all made sense. Yeah, yeah. JavaScript is, is interpreted down on the client. It is, it can be a little bit slower. Um, and it also is, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of loosely typed and there's a lot of errors that you won't catch until your JavaScript executes. So with WebAssembly, if you can write it in a lot of different languages and it can be compiled on the server and the server will catch errors like, oh, you said I was gonna get an integer here, but you actually gave me a string or whatever. And it, it, so it'll catch that when you compile. And it, okay. also, it also has the possibility of being pretty fast. Um, it's not necessarily always gonna be faster because it's still pretty new, but it's, um, that's the idea. Um, and so Blazor is C sharp code that executes and does the same things JavaScript would do. So um, what's neat with that is I can use my C sharp skills. I'm a better C sharp dev than JavaScript dev. And especially if I'm writing some C sharp and C some JavaScript, I'm gonna be jumping back and forth and not doing the best of either. So it's neat for me to be able to just write mostly C sharp. I can still use JavaScript whenever I want, but I can say like, I'm, I'm going to mostly build C Sharp for this app, or my team is really good at C Sharp Dev. We're going to mostly build C Sharp here, <laughs> and you know, and yeah, some some good some good quotes. Hi, Sean. Um, so um, there's uh, so then another nice thing with this is if I've already got some C Sharp libraries that I've written, you know, maybe I've got like some some billing code that my company has written, or maybe I've got some C Sharp NuGet packages that I like using. I can use those in my in my Blazor code. So okay. yeah, so that's kind of the idea. So it's basically for for develop. Uh, I've talked to a lot of developers, and they've said, you know what? I'm mostly a C sharp dev. I've been doing ASP.NET dev. I've been building APIs, but now my company said we're using Angular for the front end, or we're using React for the front end. So now I got to be. I got to learn JavaScript. And I'm kind of. I think I got it, but I'm not sure. You know what I mean? And so it's kind of like juggling a few things. Whereas if if it works for your company or if it works for what you're building to to use Blazor, then you can write the whole thing in C sharp, right? So okay. that's kind of the idea. Yeah. Well, to, to, to be fair, first of all, I mean, I I, I don't think every anybody's truly got JavaScript. Like we all <laughs> right. sort of have JavaScript, but not there's quite. a few people maybe. I yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I, so so I. Let me just let me just sort of re repeat this back the the the, yeah. the way that I heard this is that I can actually now write through Blazor. I can now write front end code code that's going to run in the browser in yep. C sharp. Yep, that's it. Okay, which, which is pretty crazy, right? So that's, that's yeah, um, yeah. So th so the idea then is that you can it's it's compiled on the server or, or it's compiled when you write your application, you can actually deploy it as static files now. So those, they're DLLs and all that. So people, you can host it on GitHub pages, you can host it hmm. on Azure storage, S3 storage, whatever. It's, they're just static files. Um, Azure static web apps? Absolutely, Azure static web apps are amazing. And what's really cool with Azure static web apps, I, I think you've had some shows on this? Or yes, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm a huge fan of Azure static web apps. Yeah, basically, if, if you've tuned into anything that I've done recently, you're, you're sick and tired of me talking about two things, TypeScript and Azure static web apps. I'm just starting up, I'm doing file new Blazor Wasm on my, um, on my other monitor, just so I can pop over there and show you. Okay. okay. So. So here I'm switching over. I had created a, this was my um, Razor Pages app and I'm switching over now to a, a WebAssembly app. And I'll show you what's kind of neat with this. If I'm a, if I, if I am a Razor Pages dev, this is still Razor. Now it's still, it's still got a, um, it's still got a build. Um, and this is brand new C Sharp. So I'm, or I mean, brand new .NET 5, but this is the style for this. So here I've got, a property, I've got a button, and my button has this on click, and you'll see this at sign. This means it's not a binding to JavaScript, it's binding to my WebAssembly event. You mm. see it just turned purple there, that's because it just compiled it. So now, um, so here's my thing, I've got this current count variable. When I click on click, it adds one, 
and then this binding just automatically updates. I don't have to go say, go change this or you know whatever. So this is the entire thing for an on-click. One other cool thing is here is a little more uh, complex example. I've got an HTT, HTTP client. It's calling back to a page. It's calling back to an API and saying, go get me the weather. Mm -hmm. It pops it into this weather forecast array. And then in the Blazor itself, it just iterates through and, and writes them all out. So it's, this is all, this is the same sort of thing you could write in Vue or in, you know, Angular, React, whatever. It's if you're cool. a C sharp dev, this is pretty darn simple to use. Um, you've got like, you know, full objects and you've got, um, you know, um, I, I get compile time errors if I mistype something or whatever. Um, and and then I can use this with JavaScript too. I don't have to make a choice of, oh, I'm only a C sharp faithful now, you know, whatever. <laughs> I can do C sharp and JavaScript together. Oh, this is funny. I just launched it in in the wrong browser, um, which I mean, I guess this works. I launched it in old school um, Internet Explorer. Wow, but it'll, st right. it'll still load, right? So that's it's a it's a web standard. So that's another important thing. WebAssembly, like I think I mentioned earlier, but WebAssembly is web standard, and so it'll it'll work on any um, you know, any browser, um, okay, any modern browser. So. I launched it in the wrong one though, and it's not spinning up. So I'll, I'll uh, switch <laughs> that back over. But that, that's the general yeah. idea. You can use it to you know build build whatever kind of fun stuff. So yeah, that's fantastic. It looks it looks an awful lot like like a combination of just doing Razor Pages and say Vue or or just another. Yeah, that's yeah. that's really slick. And so I can do all of that in C sharp, and then it runs on uh, uh, on the client. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and there's there's other things. There's ways that you can run it on the server if you want and that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, and one other neat thing with this is because of that, they've been able to build components, and they're similar. They've learned from mm -hmm. you know Vue and React components, and and so um, what's neat with that is we get back something that that ASP.NET um, old timers will have used, which is controls. We used to have these um, web forms controls yep. and they generated horrible HTML most of the time, but they, they were pretty powerful. And so now with this, you actually get back web standard, beautiful controls, but you can encapsulate. There's um, vendors that are selling controls now, you know, uh, DevExpress and Telerik and, you know, all the, all the big control vendors are, are, are selling. So if you want a full report, you know, or charting or whatever you can you can there and of course there's tons of um community created ones too so. okay that's yeah. that's that's fantastic. I, uh, yeah. I I I love it. I, I do want to run through a couple of questions here, and and yeah. I, I and I always want to highlight that if if you don't know the answer to to it, that's totally fine. So I'm yeah. just sort of throwing these up, and I'll I want just to start lie. with, with right. yeah. There you go. Just make something up. Um. So, but the the full question is unfortunately, um, restream is only showing a portion of it. Um. But uh, WebAssembly uh, types caused all sorts of problems with the video conference app. Uh. That um. Uh. That Epical's built using. Uh, Jitsi. Um, any tips um, about what to, to use and not to use? Uh, gosh. I mean, it really depends. Um, so Jitsi, I didn't know Jitsi was using WebAssembly. Um, I mean, you're going to want to use the newest browsers and, and you know, so that's going to be now, fortunately, with Edge also using Chromium, I would, I would, Stick to using the newest, you know, Google Chrome or or I love EdGM. I love the you know the yeah, it's, it's really solid. So oh, uh, by the way, I just got this. I reran this while while we were talking. So if I can share <laughs> this one more time, this is the things I was showing earlier. So this is when it goes and gets the data, and this is my little you know button. So okay, and that's yeah, all so running on the client. That's all running in the client. Yep. And you That's can actually good. bring up, I, I won't do it now, but you can bring up the network tools and you can watch it downloading the .NET assemblies. Mm. So it actually runs that, yeah. Oh, so. interesting, okay. That's yeah. uh, that's that's cool. Um, so the the next question um, here is, um, uh, do we use assembly language at uh, at Microsoft? 
Um, I mean, and that's sort of like a, a bigger question, but I, I would um, really sort of maybe reframe that about um, like missile code. Like what's the current status of, of the intermediate language? Yeah, well, so there's, a lot of work going into optimizing. So, so missile, you, you said the Microsoft intermediate language, and that's yeah. it's, that's what .NET. So C Sharp is one of the .NET languages. There's also um, VB.NET, F Sharp, and there's there's some others out there too. I think there's a Cobol.NET. Um, but so <laughs> so there's a lot of work that goes into optimizing those, and some of the um, some of the effort recently has gone into using they call it um, platform intrinsics. And basically the idea there is you're actually saying, hey, I'm running on this Intel chip. And so I'm going to use these, you know, bytecode operations. And yeah. it's crazy, like the the um some of the performance optimizations they've made with that. There are people at Microsoft writing just about every programming language you've ever heard of. Um and one thing I like about Microsoft is, and as you mentioned earlier, Christopher, it's a it's definitely like we love all kinds of we, like you said. I mean, the the you know, uh, Guido just joined in Microsoft, and we've got you know, we've got people, we've got whole teams building stuff in Node, and we've got to, you know, so there yeah. are there are definitely people that are writing assembly, but I I think there are a ton of people writing um, C sharp and .NET code at Microsoft. A lot of the large Microsoft apps you use, you'd be surprised how much, especially services. Um, are running on on .NET, and what, one of the things that's really cool, one that we can, you know, has made public um, blog posts and stuff about this is Bing, and they um, they get a lot of traffic, including a lot of things like services they provide for other people and stuff. And as they've moved to newer versions of .NET Core, they've seen huge performance improvements. Mm. So yeah, so that's we definitely do the the term at Microsoft is dog fooding. We eat our own dog food. Yep. And that's, you know, the, the thing is we beta test stuff. So that, like I showed earlier, the .NET website, that .NET website is running on .NET 5, which just shipped last week. We were running the .NET website that gets millions of views a month on .NET 5 previews for months before it shipped. So we really do test it out and run our, and And let me show you one other page I'm yeah. really proud of. So if I go to live.net, so it's live.net. This is live like, dot, dot, dot net. I know, I know, it's confusing. Um, but this is this is .NET Live TV. This site is all built using Blazor. This is Blazor WebAssembly. Um, I've not done really anything on this. My my boss James Montemagno has, has and the team have worked on this, but um, I worked with James on building this page out. And if you're interested in .NET, if you just want to kind of poke around, or if you're an old timer and, and you want to hang out with us, we do these <laughs> live shows. We we um, yesterday, uh, yesterday I was on the Blazor show um, with Safia and Egil, and we talked about unit testing Blazor. Um, so these go every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Oh, cool! But, yeah, but this site is built using Blazor, and if I scroll to the bottom, this is powered by .NET five. And then if we go here, like this is all, these are shows that we live stream, uh, including the community standups, but a lot of other shows. And this page also is all built in Blazor. So, so we definitely do test all our own stuff. Yep. That's, that's awesome. I dig it. I dig it. Um, so here's um, a, a good question um, is you've got, um, you do have an, a lot of overlap. Uh, Entity Adam asked this question between mm -hmm. um, Razor pages and Blazor pages, and this is obviously something that you see not just in .NET, but I, I think in just web dev in in general. That if we compare, say, doing something in Django, which is like all server side, versus mm -hmm. doing something with, let's say, React, um, which is now going to be, and again. Please don't don't yell at me when I say this. I know that this isn't technically accurate, but a lot of ways it sort of feels this way. It's like now I'm just doing everything on 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 the client. Um, yeah. You know, so we we have this in um, you know outside of .NET. Now we've got Blazor, which again, don't yell at me, but is now you know client heavy. There we go, yeah. client focus. We'll we'll go there with that go. Yeah. versus um, uh, Razor Pages, which are now server focus. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, the question then becomes of like, why should I I use one or the other. 
Yeah. And that's hard. And, you know, sometimes people will want Microsoft to tell them what to do. Um, but, you know, a lot of the time we build what we see clients asking for and what, you know, co companies are asking for and stuff. Um, we definitely like if I was talking to a new developer at, you know, just getting started, I'd recommend Razor Pages. I think it's really kind of simple uh, as a, it's a simple model. Um, okay. Everything's getting built on the server. You don't have some because part of the confusion with you know React, Angular, Vue, all these different front end, Blazor even, you've got some code executing in the browser, some code executing on the server, and it's just a little confusing what's going on. Um, and so I'd recommend as a as a beginner to start with Razor Pages. That's my okay. my feeling. Um, there are really good reasons why people build you know, front end heavy apps. Um, in some cases you're able to like have services teams that just build API backends and, you know, you actually start, then you go into microservices and you kind of break things apart more. Um, so I've definitely talked to, you know, a lot of customers and they have, they have totally separate teams, you know, teams building front end apps and then teams building back end apps. And you can really kind of focus and specialize. Um, and then once you have those APIs, they can also power mobile apps or talk to other services or whatever. Um, okay. It, but you know, it's really hard because I, I generally, I feel like people jump too quickly into the front end heavy apps. Um, it's partly just cause they're so, you know, hot right now, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, um, you know, so people immediately jump into, oh, I need, you know, react or angular or whatever front end I talk to you know, people ping me on Twitter and they ask questions and they're like getting overwhelmed because they're like, I'm building this React front end, I'm building this back. And I'm like, what are you trying to build? Hello world. I'm like, <laughs> why are you doing that? You know, like just put some HTML on the screen because you want you want your your front end heavy app to be like the the business reasons for doing that are when you two two reasons. One is you are mostly doing a lot of, you know, like you want your front page to not reload. You want your browser page to interact with the server and you're doing something that's mostly front end. You know, it's a, it's a browser phone. Yeah. This, this thing we're doing right now, we're doing this call on Restream and it's a browser page. And if either of us refreshes the browser page, the call drops, you know, <laughs> like it's, <Yeah. laughs> it's right. So, I mean, there's definitely cases where you're like, I don't want to refresh this browser page. I want to interact with it and have it update as it goes. Yep. That's one good reason. The other good reason is you're just more comfortable with it. Like you've got really good JavaScript devs and you're just like, that feels natural to you. Those are the good reasons. Every other reason is like, well, cause everyone else is doing it or cause people make fun of me if I don't or whatever. I, yeah. I don't, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. I, I had John Papa on a couple of weeks ago and this was one of the big points that, that he made is, you know, write, write whatever it is that you're comfortable with. So mm -hmm. if, if your team is experienced with, with C Sharp, for example, then, then absolutely do, um, you know, Razor, MVC, ASP.NET, whatever it is, like do something then that's going to be C Sharp focused. Like don't do something from a business perspective Perspective, just because you feel like you have to, or because this is what it is that that that, that everybody is is doing. And I think you mm -hmm. also made it like a, a another a, like fantastic point in the middle of all of that about you know just like it, it feels like hey everybody just needs to be writing for for the client, and it's yeah. left behind you know just like writing Express apps using Pug and doing server side rendering, or left behind mm -hmm. Flask using Jinja, or left behind uh, uh, Django. Um, and it's it's really sad because not only a can you get you know, fantastic per performance because mm -hmm. you've got a lot of that work that's now being done on the uh, server as opposed to the client. And there's now less stuff being sent down to the client, less than in yeah. turn for, for the client left to do. But you also highlighted then that, you know, now I'm having to learn how to do this and this and this just to build a, a simple application. Well, if you're sticking with one spot, like if all I'm doing is just Django, let's say, or if mm -hmm. all I'm doing is is just Razor Pages, that's now only one thing that, that, that I have have to learn. And if I decide, hey, I need to make this part interactive, then I can add in just that little bit of JavaScript just to make that work. But I don't have to, you know, try to, to you know, put together seven different things just to try and get that that from for that that client focused app. Exactly. And and scattering things around has some real costs because then you've got to, 
you've got to mentally shift between, you know, now I'm working on front end, now I'm working on back end, I'm doing this, and I'm doing, and we're already juggling, you know, different languages for data access and HTML and CSS. And it's like, I don't need to add in more just because. <laughs> yeah. And then there's there's also things like testing and debugging where it just takes more time to figure out what's going on where. And then deployment, as you mentioned, you can definitely like, you can also optimize with things like caching. You know, if I'm just serving down, if, I, if it's always going to be the same HTML, there's no reason to render it on the client, so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's okay to write server side code. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> um, so here's another good one. Um, since I'm not a front end dev code with Sean asked this, uh, since I'm not a, a front end dev, I get to, um, ask this question without feeling terrible. What's the difference between ASP.NET and Razor? Doesn't Razor still need route routing and, uh, and controllers? Yeah, it does. So, well, not controllers. So, so the idea is um, MVC, you have, you know, your, your workflow for this is your request comes in, there's routing. So if I browse to slash products, you mm -hmm. know, like my site slash products, then there's a control, there's a routing rule that says the product controller is going to go get you that information. So then my product controller goes to the database, looks up information, puts all the information into a model and then that model class is returned to a view and the view uh, gets rendered out. And so there's kind of all this kind of bouncing between different things. For some applications, that's exactly the right model. It's really good for separating the concerns and you know, it really kind of makes sense. What we notice though is for a lot of applications, you really just need two things. You need your, your page template, which you'd write in Razor code, mm -hmm. and then you need your code that's going to get your data and for you know put everything to do all the kind of smart stuff and so that we kind of combine together the model and the controller and so that's the razor pages thing okay um, and the the kind of secret under the hood is razor pages is actually a layer on top of mvc so anything you wanted to do with mvc you still can do that all the kind of primitive stuffs there we just made it so you don't have to write Razor page controller return view. Razor pages controller return view. You know what I mean? And then also, there's also some problems you can get into because people would have controllers. Uh, they Their model classes would be used all over the place. And you can get into some problems with things with overbinding and different things where you can cause security problems or you can write fragile code if you're right. using your models in your views. So then people were like, okay, we need a view model. And then once you're writing a model and a view model and a controller and a, you know, a, a, you know, it's like, well, I just want to put some HTML on the screen. You know? <laughs> so that's, that's the razor pages idea. Okay. I got it. I got yeah. it. I, one of the things I, 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 I get a kick out of here with, with, with the way that this question is now being displayed is um, the way that Twitch is set up <laughs> is that yeah. any links are just automatically start out. So it just looks like we're swearing about <laughs> yeah, MVC yeah. here. So, which, which we're not. Um, <laughs> They're like, MVC. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cool. All right. I think that's at the moment then, um, all of the, uh, all of the chat questions. Those are great. Um, uh, and please, 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 if you're, if you're watching this and you've got questions, the, um, there's one, there's one that I like Jen Iskew brought up. Um, he's replying to code with Sean and he said something about web forms for blazer. Um, yeah. and that's actually a really cool project and it's a neat idea. Um, so, so back in the day and a lot of a lot of um, you know legacy whatever ASP.NET web applications we all call, also call them money making because they're if they're still around they're making somebody money. Um, a lot of businesses run on web forms, and it's been hard for web forms developers to move to MVC or Razor Pages. And so what's pretty neat, Jeff Fritz uh, has created this project called um, that it's it's um I forget what it's called, but it, the basic idea is he rewrote all these web forms controls as Blazor controls. And mm. what, what that allows you to do is you can very quickly update your web forms markup and all of a sudden your application's running in Blazor, latest, fastest .NET Core, like, you know, it's very quick to, to kind of jump. You can leapfrog, you know, 10 years of, of uh, web app development and get on the newest thing, so. 
I dig it. You know, I, I always, I, I really liked web forms. I mean, I understand that, you know, the moment you try to get into doing anything on the client, just, you yeah. know, forget about it. <laughs> but, um, but at the very least, like being able to just go, you know, ASP colon calendar and ASP colon text box, especially if, um, and this of course was, was the target audience. If, if you were um, a windows forms developer, yeah. it felt so natural um, creating um uh, uh, creating web forms. And I'd also dabbled a little bit with, uh, with cold fusion, um, which had mm -hmm. a lot of their own custom tags and, 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 uh, and so forth, really dating myself by throwing out cold fusion yep. reference there. Um, and so, you know, again, it felt, it felt very natural to me. And if you, if all that you wanted was, you know, like that hello world, like I just wanted to get something up and running really quickly. I thought web forms was, was really good for that. Obviously it, it has, a couple of challenges, but I yeah. thought it was, it was really good. Um, you, yeah. yeah, exact same experiences. You could very quickly write a web forms app that did something. It was a little harder to make it look good. And then there were also challenges where if you had an inexperienced team or a not quite disciplined team, it could very quickly turn very hard to manage. It was really hard to keep that code very clean and nice, but I've worked with teams that built beautiful code, beautiful web forms apps, you know, and, but you just had to have a lot of discipline and that's part of where yeah. like MVC very cleanly structures things and, you know, really kind of makes it. Um, so, but what's really cool with examples like the Jeff's blazer web forms controls is it's reminding me how nice that component model is because being able to very, it's to have one component that does just one thing it's reusable, but it's, it's, you know, it's encapsulated really well. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to do a bunch of like, get this, pass this to this is what I just set properties and the control automatically binds and updates. And, yeah. uh, and then they've been doing some really, uh, one of the new things that they just added was uh, CSS isolation. So you can write CSS just for a component and it's, it's compiled and it's, it's only, you don't have to worry about your CSS affecting anything else on the site. So it makes it really easy that you can write CSS directly in a component. So. Yeah. And, yeah. And really, in, in a lot of ways, isn't this sort of what we're seeing when you look at like components for Vue or React or, or anything like that? It's yeah. like, you're really, you're just, you're creating your own um, uh, quote unquote HTML element, if, if you will, like you're creating your own controls. You're just setting yeah. a couple of properties and then voila, it's doing a bunch of magic for you. Like it, maybe I guess what I'm trying to say here is web forms was just, it was ahead of its time. I really, I like, IPTV. <laughs> <laughs> well, and when you look at some of the, you know, people complained so much about the HTML that was created by, by web forms. But when you actually view the generated source in some, you know, like go to Facebook and try and view source or go to, you know, even Google, like, uh, you know, or if you view the generated source from, from a lot of, you know, React or Angular apps, it's, it's, you know, <laughs> they were ahead of their time on mangling their HTML too. <laughs> 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 we we let the way on writing bad yeah. HTML. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. <laughs> um, so there's a question um, um, from Loka here, um, and I'm going to try and summarize this here real quick. But um, mm -hmm. using um, an OData API for for listing objects, um, and of course they've got you know the puts, the puts, the 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 deletes, and all of that mm -hmm. good stuff. They're planning to update the MVC app to add uh, more features. And so the question is, should they stick with MVC for the user interface? or again sort of bringing this back to that question of or should they go ahead and um, uh, and migrate that out to some JavaScript and, and something that's maybe a little more uh, client heavy Wow it really depends on for me I would think the user interaction if you if it's something where you're going to have you know users interacting with it and you want to have the updates without the page refresh th then that's where I would kind of look at rewrite. Okay. We, always re rewrites are, are a lot of work. And so you want to have, you want to get something for it. Well, MVC absolutely still works really well. Um, so I would need to see some sort of business reason. You know, what are you going to get out of this? Is the page going to be more user friendly? Is it going to be easier for your team to maintain? Otherwise, I would honestly kind of keep it where it is. If you, I have to say, just because I love all the shiny new stuff, if you are, 
mostly like an MVC shop, you could look at this could be a good case for a blazer because blazer mm. you could it's very easy to call http client calls back to to a uh, you know server side api so i've seen people convert mvc controllers to api controllers and then you just use you know your blazer to call directly into that a reason for that is you can use the same model class on the client and server so mm. if I have a product class, I don't have to have a product JS and I don't have to have a product, you know, like directives and bindings and all that on the client. I can just use the same product.cs. So I take it. I take yeah. it. And and besides, I mean, and 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 I don't think that 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 um that this can be uh, that this can be overstated, and and I'm saying this is a huge TypeScript fan. Like TypeScript, uh, a, a TypeScript will will resolve a, like a whole class of bugs um, mm -hmm. that JavaScript will otherwise give you when it comes to typing and and things like that. But TypeScript, unfortunately, is not perfect, and there's a couple of things mm -hmm. that TypeScript is just not able to pick up on. And one of the biggest is whether or not you've called a wait. Like if 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 you if you type something in Visual Studio Code where you try to use something, VS Code can often pick up the fact, hey, you really needed to await this, and it will just automatically do that. But of course, that's yeah. at, at, at as I'm writing it. The moment I run the code, if I've forgotten the await, I'm now just going to get an error message. And it's almost always just some random like object not disposed or, or just like something that's near impossible to try and track down. But of course, mm -hmm. C Sharp, being that fully strongly typed language, um, is able to pick up on that. And it can, it can catch those types of things. Um, uh, whereas, you know, even if you're using TypeScript, it, it can't. And I, I think that there's definitely something to be said for using a, a fully strongly typed language. It's, it is something where, you know, for, for people that have, like, I've that's my background. I've done more of that. And so mm -hmm. I'm used to that. And then when I'm developing without that in the client code, I'm frustrated because I'm chasing down errors in my page load and what, <laughs> you know, like can't bind a DOM element, what, you know, and stuff. But, but I, I do find like a lot of developers that have, you know, just done mostly front end dev, they don't even, they don't know what they're missing kind of, you know, yeah. I mean? <laughs> like we were spoiled with having that kind of strongly typed and everything's, you know, having the compiler find errors for us. Yeah, so. yeah, one hundred percent. I I do need to 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 highlight this just since you know you're talking about just like all type dev. Uh, you know we were talking <laughs> about like cold fusion. So Code Rashad here mentioned Visual Inner Dev, which absolutely, I, yeah, good times, <laughs> good times. Bring Somebody good mentioned hot day. dog too. That's that was also a good one. I, I don't know. That, I I don't know that I I worked with hot dog at all. There, there were a, a bunch of silly ones, you know. Out there, I mean, funny named ones, but before like you know, the big, you know, before Microsoft, you know, and some of the other, you know, but I mean, mostly there were a bunch of kind of smaller HTML editors for a while. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I take it. Hot metal and hot dog. And, yeah. <laughs> Elliot points out a nice thing too here, which is that you can place Blazor components in a view. So that's something that people tend to see Blazor as I'm building all Blazor. My app is 100% Blazor, or my app is all Angular, or my app is all whatever. And I do love that about the web that you can mix and match. So it's very mm. easy to have a mostly HTML rendered on the server page that has a little island of Angular or a little island of Blazor, right? So you can you can put those together. Yeah, I, I I dig that. So like going back to to the O data question from before, then maybe mm -hmm. like if, if one of the things that they're looking for is the ability to like subfilter or sort on on the client without having to do a refresh, that um, you know the bulk of the page could be loaded up and set up using server side rendered um, uh, MVC HTML, and then I can have a control in the middle that's actually displaying my data. That's the Blazor, and yep. then now I could go ahead and do that subfiltering, subsorting then. Yeah, and there is even some stuff that does remind me. Blazor now has a thing where they will actually pre-render. They can pre-render on the server and then update. So they can pre-render stuff um, and then update it on the client. Um, and it, it does get a little more complicated. You have to manage it a little bit, but it's it's pretty slick that that works. So, I, I, I dig yeah. it. That's awesome. Um, the question is, uh, Static Web Apps uh, uses yeah. what um, uh, what API? So a static web app can use any API. So like, for instance, I could have a Blazor app talking to a whatever backend. It could be calling gRPC. It could be calling a PHP 
um, could be calling Django. So it's really, it's just web standards. So I could, you know, some of the common ones, if you are, you know, staying in the Microsoft developer ecosystem, you could write an ASP.NET Core API backend, or you could use something like static web apps and use func Azure Functions. So you, you would have, you know, your static blazers executing in the client, and then it's calling back to Azure Functions that are returning HTTP, you know, JSON, all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh Field Marshal um, uh, brings up, you know, about a good idea uh, going back to like our own data and doing some filtering. You know, it's a good idea um, if it's running on the server, but we have to download nearly two megs for for the client. And and you know, there, I, I think there's two things that that, that mm -hmm. I at least want want, want to highlight on, on this. Number one is, you know, one thing we always have to remember as as web developers, and this is something that's constantly forgotten because we're so spoiled, is that there's a large portion of 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 the population that does not have broadband. Um, and that's yeah. true even in, um, you know, like like here in the U.S., there's still a very large portion that does not have broadband or they're on some form of metered access. So we always need mm -hmm. to be very conscious of how it is that that we're using um you know that 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 uh, that that connection. How we're using their um, their their bandwidth there. Um, yeah. You know, and and that also then brings up you know like the the other point about downloading two megs. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You don't want to send down like here's all the data in the database, and now we're just going to sort everything on the client. But you know, let's maybe send down 500k, and and especially if I know that that's 500k that you're going to be interested in, let's just send that down in one shot, and then now you could go ahead and do that sub filtering and sub sorting. Yeah, you know, and it is an interesting trade off because. You do have with Blazor, you're downloading some binary files, and so that is some weight. However, a couple of things to balance against that is, uh, I guess, three things. One is that other front end heavy frameworks also often do that, and there's there's very kind of we're getting close between binary compiled, you know, Blazor and the JavaScript libraries that you pull down. Um, mm. Two is that a lot of web pages also have a lot of you know, images. So like if you're worrying about, you know, two megabytes of image or of binary, you know, executable, but not the images, you know, you should also check out your full page weight. And the one other thing to keep in mind too is the interaction model. If you're, if people are getting, they're needing to wait a little bit for the page to load, but once it's loaded, it's very snappy because it's just making APIs calls to the server, then that's worthwhile. Um, and it's actually, you know, possibly a better experience. And and one thing that they've done with this more too lately is portable web apps, or, or progressive web apps. Progressive it, web apps. P PWAs, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, see, I keep myself out of trouble if I just call them PWAs. And <laughs> but what's neat with those is that that um, they can be installed as an application. Mm -hmm. So then it's actually cached all locally, loads really really fast, you know, on every sub subsequent load. And it can also do things like back background sync and you know all that. Um, so th so that's that's a really good interaction model too. Yeah, one hundred percent. I I honestly I, I both Outlook and Teams. I use the 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 PWA version. I don't use the 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 fat client on it, and I, I find it just it's it's so much so much faster. And then obviously, especially when you're talking about Outlook, because um, uh, I I'm one that never actually deletes deletes email um i i just keep everything in my deleted items so i'd have six years in my deleted items um yeah. periodically i need to go in and do a hard delete just because i'll get the nasty gram going hey you're 95 percent full but um uh but now i don't have all of that on an ost file on on my own local system that instead exactly all of that's just in the cloud so i really love that experience like yes it it you know, it takes a minute for for that to um, have opened up the first time. But now, from here on forward, it's it's blinding speed. And then again, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not taking up everything on uh, uh, on my hard drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. We have gone over, um, and I could I, I could keep you here for for another um, hour or so, um, just chatting a, about everything. Uh, but let me let me let me get you out of here on 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 this, which is 
Like if, if there's one now kind of main takeaway, especially for somebody who either A, hasn't done .NET before, or B, mm -hmm. um, somebody like myself who used to do a lot of .NET and now has, has um, migrated over to other frameworks and other languages, um, what would you say is, is a great starting point? Like where, where, where should they go look for, for more information on that? And, more, and, and, and really anything else that you want to plug here? Yeah. Okay. Well, so let me just dot.net. So I'll, I'll go back and share my screen super fast yep. as I wrap up. So this, this is our site has these get started things. We've really kind of, kind of tried to optimize it towards, Oh, I kind of want to learn about web. So you click here and you click on get started and we'll take you through some basic stuff. And the end, it'll take you to a next step and it'll take you to our docs. And we really do pay attention to these and try and make them like we watch where people bail out of the tutorials or have trouble and stuff. So we really try and make these as smooth an experience as possible. Um, so that is the get started for, for ASP.NET, but also any other .NET stuff. One other thing I want to plug is the .NET Conf. It just ended, that was last week. And so like clicking through on this, this will take you to tons of YouTube things for all our, um, I'd recommend the keynote if you just want to get an idea of what is .NET. Um, you know, but there's there's a ton of cool stuff there. So the, those are the two main things, and and all of that you'll get to just .net .microsoft .com or that dot .net. So, Excellent, I love it. Yeah. All right, well, it turns out there was somebody that's coming on to this Twitch uh -oh. channel right like seven minutes ago, and now we've yeah. taken up all their their time. So now I just feel terrible. I I didn't know that anybody had this. Spot. That's so uh, Christos. Yeah. He was yeah <laughs> yeah. So we'll go ahead and uh, and and get out of here, John. I want to thank you a ton for 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 doing this. I'm back on Microsoft Reactor uh, YouTube page tomorrow doing some uh, view stuff, and please stick around for Christos uh, talking about B two C. Um, uh, it, it's going to be much more entertaining, a lot more fun than, than the two of us. So yeah, uh, John, we have to get you back on again. We'll have to do this again. Thank you Sounds to everybody great. for tuning in. Thanks, so, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Bye.